Okay, hello everybody. Um, welcome into our mobile banking virtual workshop. Today we are just waiting for folks to come in. Um, nice, bright, and early. Thank you all for adjusting to our 10 a.m. time slot. So we'll give it just another moment or so and let folks trickle on in. Just to introduce myself briefly, my name is Jessica Keegan. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm coming at you from the Office of Economic Empowerment. So we'll just give folks another minute or two to come on in. Okay, it is 10.02 and also the fire truck that was going by in the background, I think, has moved a bit further off. So I think that means we can start our presentation today. Um, so again, welcome everybody to the mobile banking virtual workshop. We are very excited to have you here. It's the conclusion in our series, our three-part series, but at the same time, uh, we are definitely welcoming any folks who are coming to this for the first time. Keep an eye out in the future. If you'd like to see something similar where we have these three series of workshops, um, just that so we can make sure that everybody can attend. So welcome to the conclusion of this series. So just to dive in very quickly, we'll explain a little bit about the Office of Economic Empowerment, some disclosures and housekeeping. We'll turn to a very great welcome video, and then we'll dive into the mobile banking workshop presentation. So the Office of Economic Empowerment is a department within the Office of the Treasury. We offer free and accessible financial education um, to all walks of life, including other aspects like wage equity and making sure children have a bright future financially. This is a Zoom webinar. You may notice that this is not as similar to a Zoom meeting. This will be recorded, and this recording may be uploaded onto a public website for future use. Any information shared through the questions functions will be anonymous. However, we are subject to public record laws, um, and so the chat cannot be anonymous. Just as housekeeping, since you were in a webinar, not a meeting, as stated, you will not be able to view the other participants or come off mute or turn on your camera. However, definitely feel free to ask any questions um, through the Q&A function as they arise, um, and we'll make sure to dedicate some time to those questions and feel free to use the chat in case you need anything as well. And so we can make sure that we know that you want content like this and we can cater content for you. Please complete the post survey just so we can make sure that this program can continue and become even better. So now we'll start with this welcome video. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Chen. It is my honor to serve as the Secretary of the Massachusetts Executive Office of Elder Affairs. We call it EOEA. At EOEA, we are committed to ensuring older adults and their caregivers have options to live and thrive in the communities of their choice. And that includes ensuring they have the financial ability to do so. I want to thank you for taking the time to participate in this money management training that's offered to the Aging Services Network. We know there are a variety of factors that contribute to an individual's economic situation, including wages, inflation, and emergencies. In this training, you will learn about budgeting, credit management, and fraud prevention. These are helpful tools when navigating one's professional and personal life with economic security. Thank you again for participating, and I hope you find today's training helpful and informative. Great, thank you so much to the EOEA uh, for getting that lovely welcome message from Secretary Chen. And as you may have noticed, uh, we mentioned this was a series, so I will pop these uh, excuse me, these links into the chat in case you missed any and you would like to go and review our banking and budgeting workshop or our credit and scam and fraud workshop. 
um, we'll make sure that we get those. And as such, for those who registered, we'll make sure that those links are in your follow-up email as well, so you can view them later for your convenience. But I will stop sharing my screen, um, and I will turn over to Dutch to get going with the presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Dutch. Thank you very much and good morning, everybody. Um, very nice to see you. Uh, I'm actually happy that we're two hours later than last time. That, that works well for me. Um, but I'm excited that you again decided to spend some time with me in the morning uh, to talk about financial education and financial empowerment. Um, if you haven't joined before and if this is your first session, uh, just a couple of things to keep in mind that I wanted to share. Um, First and foremost, um, we are super excited uh, at MNT Bank to be partnering with the Office of Economic Empowerment as well as the Texas Office of Elder Affairs to teach financial education and to give you resources, to give you additional knowledge that you can use with your families as well as with the elders that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, your work is so important and we feel the more resources we can give you and the more tools we can give you to help people make better financial decisions, the better it will be. Um, these are just trainings to provide you with resources and some fundamental skills. We are not designed to turn you into financial experts. These are not um, designed to turn you into any type of financial advisor or give you any type of certification. We just, again, wanna provide you more education on financial terms and strategies. If you have specific questions for your own situation, for your family, or for the elderly population that you work with, please continue to visit trusted financial experts and advisors within your community. Um, and of course, we are a resource. Um, our contact information is available. If you have questions on the webinars or just wanna have some additional guidance, we can, we can help with that. Um, like I mentioned, I'm Dutch Koltoff. Um, I was born and raised in the Netherlands, therefore the name Dutch instead of my official name, Hermanus Marinus. Moved here 23 years ago, and I currently work for M&T Bank, uh, who just purchased People's United Bank. So that's why the name and the logo might be new. And together, together with the other happy fellow on the picture, Jordan Green, we are the financial empowerment team at M&T Bank in Massachusetts. Um, truly have a passion for financial education. When I first migrated into the States, the whole US banking system, the whole credit score system, and a lot of banking basics were new to me. So I'm happy that I was able to build a career to talk about all the mistakes I made and make sure people don't make them uh, further on. Now, before we jump in, there's just one thing I wanna mention. We did notice in some of our practice sessions as well as last week, that throughout the presentation, it seems that um, once in a while, there's a 10 second delay uh, where it seems like I lose both sound and picture. We are aware, I just want you to know, I'll come right back if that does happen. I just wanna apologize ahead of time. Uh, even after almost three years, we still once in a while run into technical difficulties when we wish we didn't. So. Just keep that in mind uh, if you see it happen. And that said, um, today we're gonna talk about mobile and online banking. How can you easily access your banking resources? In previous sessions, we talked about budgeting, we talked about the basics of banking, we talked about credit score, credit reporting, as well as gave you some resources to uh, prevent both you and uh, the elderly population from identity theft. And today we wanted to discuss how you can Combine all those tools in your actually banking experience uh, using mobile and online banking. So just like um, before, we're gonna try to give you resources to improve your financial habits. We're gonna discuss some safety features. And then we're also gonna talk about some resources and next steps you can use to access mobile banking as well as online banking. So let's get started and make sure we're all fully engaged. And we're gonna start with a little poll. Jessica, if I could ask you to pop up the poll. So how do you use online banking? What online banking options do you currently already engage in? Do you check your balance and account activity? Do you pay bills online? Do you set up actual banking alerts? Is it A and B, balance and online? All of the above, or are you like, you know what Dutch, I have no clue what online or mobile banking can do for me, which is why I joined this call, so I do none of the above. Um, so go ahead, type in your answer. And Jessica, if you want to close it out, I'm curious to see what the results would be. Okay, so interesting. Um, one person that is completely new to mobile banking, so this is going to be a really good session for you. And it looks like um, about 90% are quite familiar with online banking options themselves, which is good. Uh, and, and I'm happy to see that. 
it will mean that hopefully I can give you some additional thoughts and resources through the session. Uh, it also means that hopefully we can talk about how you can share these resources with the elderly population. Like how can you make sure that the people you take care of on a daily basis or when you communicate with caregivers, how can you make sure that some of the online and uh, mobile resources that are all available to them are also going to be available, sorry, to you are also going to be available to them. Um, mobile banking and online banking, um, it's, it's amazing to think about the fact that 10 years ago, there was no iPhone. I believe just 10 years ago, the first iPhone was introduced. Um, and mobile banking and online banking really have taken off since um, about two thirds of the banking population in the US uh, prefers to use online banking and mobile banking in some form. Uh, for a while, there was some nervousness. Would that mean that brick and mortar branches would disappear? And you can see a lot of different reactions from the banking system in finding ways to connect with the audiences and have different type of branches. But one out of five people still wants to visit the branch. Uh, one out of 10 people still wants to continue to visit ATM machines when they want to access their cash or look at their balances. So I'm pretty certain that we're always going to have some type of brick and mortar presence. Um, the looks and the feels of these branches might change, right? There's more modern branches. There's more branches where there's online stations where somebody would help you access your online accounts. Uh, some branches serve coffee. And while you have coffee, they'll talk to you about financial banking uh, resources. So the mix between online banking, mobile banking, and brick and mortar will always exist. The numbers might change depending on people's preferences but you're always gonna see brick and mortar as a banking preference. Now, obviously the younger population seems to be more interested in online and mobile banking resources. And the population that you might be dealing with on a daily basis is more comfortable visiting a branch, uh, even for some very basic transactions that we're gonna share with you today. Um, could be a social aspect, maybe they wanna visit the branch and get to know uh, the people inside the branch network. Um, but we often find that once we share all the resources that are available online or through mobile banking, that also the elderly population realizes, hey, wow, I can all do a lot of these things directly from home. I don't need to take the time to visit a branch uh, for some basic transactions. Why would you use online and mobile banking? Um, it is simple. It is flexible. It is convenient. Uh, as long as you have an internet connection uh, or, or a Wi-Fi connection or, or cell phone data, you'll be able to access your banking information. Um, it's secure. And that's often, we talked about last week, we talked a lot about identity theft protection and fraud protection. A lot of people are nervous about people hacking online systems. A lot of people are nervous about carrying around credit card or debit cards that might get compromised. Um, everybody always carries their phone. Everybody always has their phone, uh, hopefully protected with a password. And we're gonna find that Overall, when it comes to security, uh, online banking and mobile banking and the security data and the encryption that is used um, is probably the most secure you could possibly find. Uh, and it's one of the most secure ways to actually bank and look at your financial data. And lastly, uh, it also can improve your ability to monitor your finances. And it doesn't mean that you can always look at your account balances and available credit in real time. Um, you can also have different alerts set up. You can have spending alerts set up. And more and more mobile applications and more and more banking applications have features that allow you to set budgets, that have features that help you track your spending, have features that can truly help you realize your goals. In one of our very first sessions, when we talked about budgeting, we talked about setting a savings goal and, and creating a picture. And when you wanted to create a picture, uh, for, in my example, it was a trip to Hawaii having a picture of that on your fridge or on your computer screen. Why not have it on your phone? So every time that you look at your phone, you think about your vacation that you want to travel to. So when you access the data, your financial data for a transfer or for online access, you are again, you have that mental reminder um, that you're trying to save for some goals. So great reasons to use online and mobile banking. And we're going to go into some of these features more and more. And you're going to see a couple of screenshots from our bank, MNT Bank. That's because I work there and I would love for all of you to come eventually join, uh, but truly every bank um, in, in, in the modern world, if you have a modern bank, if you have a credit union, you'll see similar features on their website, on their mobile app, and, and truly any bank in Massachusetts um, would be the best possible bank to help you with your resources. So what are some of the features that are available to you? And some of those we'll discuss in a little bit more detail. Depositing your checks. Um, normally, instead of visiting a branch by five o'clock, you have a much later day 
a time that you'll be able to deposit money in your account, uh, access your money quicker, transfer funds um, between existing accounts as well as external accounts, pay your bills, um, being able to access accounts quickly if you think there might be um, a security breach, um, see everything in one place, the ability to uh, access different bank numbers, but also different bank accounts and other financial data into one place. And then last but not least, a lot of people continue to use their debit cards and their credit cards on a daily basis. So through online banking and mobile banking, you have the ability to set alerts. Um, if your debit card is lost, you'll be able to go to your online app and quickly put a block on the card while you're looking for it. If you find it again, you can quickly unblock it. It prevents you having to call the branch, having them order a new card, waiting three to four days for a new card, when you can quickly access that feature online. Credit card notifications. Anytime a credit card is used, do you get a notification so you know ahead of time, wait a minute, that's not me. There's a security breach. I should be aware of it. Um, and the same thing with spending limits or credit limits. Uh, I think I told people in the previous class, I have two teenage daughters. I actually, uh, both of them currently have bank accounts. Not only do I get notifications if that debit card is used, I'm also able to limit how much they can use on their debit cards uh, and watch it that way. So some great features that we can manage online uh, through your banking platform and your online banking platform. We'll talk about a few of them in a little bit more detail. This one I like the most, assistance with your financial goals. It really ties into our previous webinars. How can you make sure that Oop, Dutch, we lost you there. You've got your video back up. And we should have my sound back up. And we do have your sound back up. Just waiting on the screen. There you go. I saw it happen. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. See, I got excited about talking about financial goals. So because in the previous Dutch, webinar, would you mind resharing your screen? Oh, absolutely. Sorry. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, and we're back to normal. Um, this might happen two more times, just, just to let you know. It seems every 10 to 15 minutes this pops up. My apologies. So in previous webinars, we talked about setting goals, budgeting. How can we track and make sure that our financial goals are being met? Um, how can I track my spending? How can I make sure I pay off my debts correctly? Most online banking systems and most banking apps through your existing bank, have some type of money smart system, have some type of dashboard where you would be able to create budgets, manage your cash flow, spend and save, look at uh, the activities, track your expendi expenditures, and have a snapshot day to day uh, of your tracking and your goals. And you can see with MNT, we offer spending, budgeting, trending, net worth. How can you track your goals? Um, I know every major bank has a similar tool on their website. There's also apps specifically made for this. Uh, Mint is a very popular website. Personal Finance is a very popular website. There's a lot of really cool information available right at your fingertips to help you realize your financial goals. So online banking and mobile banking is not just about, okay, can I track my account balances and do I know where I spent my money on? It truly should be used as a resource to help you with your financial goals, help you with your financial spending, and, and keep you alert, keep you aware of fees and charges that are not necessary, that should not be there. Are there memberships that you pay for? Are there subscriptions that you pay for? Um, I work at a bank. I barely ever walk into a branch anymore. All my banking is done online. All my banking is done through mobile, except for once in a while if I would need a cashier's check. Um, and I just have the habit of every morning quickly looking at my bank account. And it takes five minutes just to make sure there's no funny charge, just to make sure there's nothing happening that I'm not aware of or that I should be aware of that alerts uh, that I can track. Um, and I, I, I love the fact that not only can I check transactions, I can continue to set myself reminders and make sure that I'm on my way to reach my goals. Great feature, and, and every bank should have it. Uh, you should use it. Let me go to the next one, and let's check deposits. Um, this is, I think, something you should really share with the elderly population as well. Um, if money is not being transferred automatically, um, again, I was born and raised in the Netherlands. I frankly, when I moved here in 1995, I had never written a check in my life. 
Back in the Netherlands, everything is done automatically through automatic debits and credits. Uh, and I'm still amazed to this day that we have people that get a physical paycheck that walk into a branch to cash their paycheck, take the cash, and then walk to another bank to make a deposit. It, it baffles me, and there's so many more convenient ways to do this. And one of them is check deposits. So physical checks are still being used. Um, you can use the camera feature on your phone to take a picture of the front of the check, turn it around, take a picture of the back of the check. And just like with a regular paper check, you just have to make sure that on the back you write for deposit only, for mobile deposit only. Um, a lot of banks have little features and demonstrations online to show how a check can be deposited. I showed you a quick little one right here that's on YouTube. Um, we as a bank love mobile deposits. You should love the convenience. It's easy. It's really difficult to commit fraud with mobile deposits as well, right? A check fraud, um, the item gets deposited immediately and gets verified the same night um, versus a fake check that might be deposited in person in a branch where from the branch it would then go to a back office for deposit checks and there's an additional delay that could cause some fraud. So with online check deposits, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Just use the camera feature. Again, there's, there's videos on how to use it. Um, this is definitely something if you work with the elderly population that I would recommend that you share. Makes life so much easier. Um, and they can also use it if they still send checks to their grandchildren. Um, they might like the next feature, money transfers. Um, different money transfer features and different banks use different companies uh, and all of them try to make money transfers within the U.S. specifically as easy as possible, right? And instead of sharing bank account information, instead of sharing routing numbers, one of the benefits of all these money transfer companies and, the, and resources is that both the sender and the receiver only use their email and their mobile number when they communicate to each other. So when you sign up for a transfer, if you sign up for a money transfer feature, you do have to use your bank card number or your bank account number and your routing number, and the same thing for the receiver. But once you're set up with any of these companies, Sally, Fenrir, PayPal, Cash App, Google Pay, Apple Pay, and there's many more, once you're set up, the communication between the two parties is only email, is only mobile number. So there's additional security layer, less of your information is shared with the outside world, and it just makes things so much easier to quickly send money if you'd like to. Normally, if you send money, there might be a one or a two day delay, if the, if, especially if it's more than $100. And a lot of these money transfer companies are trying to get additional income uh, by then charging some fees. So with Fenmo, for instance, I know that if you want to have the money show up immediately, if you have an account and you say, okay, I don't wanna wait two days, I'd like to receive that money immediately or send that money immediately, they charge you a percentage of the total fee. So again, it depends on the urgency. My teenage daughter needs money. It's probably going to be worth using the fee because she's about to go to college. If you have the ability to wait a couple of minutes or wait a couple of days, uh, watch for those fees. Make sure you don't overpay for a money transfer. All these are still cheaper than walking into a branch. Um, a wire transfer is still about thirty to thirty-five dollars. Um, so much easier to do it with a money transfer online. I pay my rent this way. Um, and we talked about credit scores in a previous webinar. More and more of the credit reporting agencies are looking at money transfers and automatic payments um, as a way to help establish credit as well. Another really cool feature is the mobile wallet. So if you truly want to go full mobile, and, and personally, I think eventually we'll get to this stage uh, in our lifetime. Um, you have access to a mobile wallet, which stores your payments, your credit card or your debit card information directly on your phone. And when you go shopping, all you have to do is pretty much click on your phone and wave uh, your phone to the payment app. Um, a discrete account number is transmitted to send a payment. This is probably the most secure way to make a payment at any retail store at any location. You're not using your debit card in the skimming machine like we talked about last week. Uh, you truly just sent an image to the scanner and every single time that's a different account number, right? So it's impossible for a thief to try to catch that. Um, you can now also have travel tickets. I just, uh, yesterday, don't tell anybody, I'm gonna go see ABBA on, on Saturday. There's an, an ABBA um, cover band 
in, in Lynn and what can I say? Um, using Ticketmaster tickets to be able to see him. And my health uh, passport, I have the COVID-19 vaccinations also on my phone, all in a very secure way that can only with face ID on my phone or with my thumbprint can be accessed. Um, the one thing uh, I do want to remind everyone of, as much as I love mobile wallet, if you purchase a large item at a store and you have a receipt and you try to return the item, you might find, obviously, because it's a different account number each time, that the account number on the receipt does not match the physical uh, card number. So I just recommend that you let the people in the store know, hey, this is why that happens. I need to wait. Normally, it's fine. Um, if they do need a physical card, most cards are set up that if you scan it for a return, it automatically realizes the return needs to happen. Okay? Uh, but mobile wallet, another fantastic mobile and online feature that I would recommend to everyone. So those are some great features. Um, what can you do to make sure if you haven't done it yourself, right, you that's that 10% on the call, uh, but also everybody that wants to help um, your family or the elderly population with enrollment, um, always check your current financial institution. Look at the apps that you have available. Look at the features they have available. Do you physically need to go into the branch uh, where the banker could give a demonstration when they enroll you? Or is it easy enough to download download the app of the bank or visit the website. Key, set a secure password. My finances, I have different passwords for my Netflix subscription. I have different passwords for my library subscription. When it comes to my finances, I do make sure that there's a very strong password. Mix of numbers, mix of letters, mix of symbols. In my case, more than 12 digits and nothing that is easy identifiable. Um, again, this is the one piece when I talk about security and safety and how fantastic online and mobile banking is, do not use the word password as your password. That would pretty much make this whole demonstration useless. So try to make sure when you talk to family members and when you talk to the elderly population, the key piece is setting a secure password. And then I would recommend you use a mobile wallet as much as you can versus having cards um, walking around. The reason is security. Right. I'm just going to bring up two of the screens that we used last week when it comes to identity theft and identity fraud. Again, identity theft, when somebody is trying to access your information, even if it's not for financial gain, versus fraud. Somebody specifically is targeting your information used to access money, which is what people try to do with your um, mobile app and with your online applications. Um, the quickest and easiest way is either through email, and we had examples of phishing emails last week, or through text. Hello, this is your bank. There seems to be an unauthorized transaction on your account. So we blocked your card. Please click here to verify your account information. Please click on this link. Please download an attachment. Often those um, texts and those emails have spelling errors. Um, let's make sure that you don't react to a text or an email. Either sign in separately onto the app and see if there's any type of warning there. Or again, contact your bank if you feel that you are the victim or the possible victim of a fraud transaction, or you're just wondering if this text or this email could be correct. Important to mention, and then when, we, when everything is done through mobile and online banking, of course, making sure that security is in place is super important. Use a strong password, keep it a secret, makes sense. Use a secure internet connection the man who might fall off in a second. And what's really cool, most of the bank systems, just like the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, now have a little guidance on the top of the screen where they let you know that this is a safe connection. Um, and I might be able to show that in a minute. Um, if there is communications, verify you're communicating with. If you're not certain that the person on the phone um, is truly a bank employee, hang up and call the bank directly and only download the apps from reputable sources like the actual website or a valid app marketplace, uh, Google or Apple uh, would be the way to go. Seems very logical. I'm always amazed how often when we have uh, webinars and interaction with clients, how often people forget to build, recall the basic steps. Um, if your bank has anti-malware that could be installed for free uh, that would protect you against viruses, always a good thing to have. Um, again, the whole point of mobile banking and online banking is that you can monitor your accounts and transactions. I do it daily. Um, doesn't mean I look at a full statement. I just make sure there's nothing funny showing up. Don't forget to log out, especially in a public place. Do not leave your items open. 
and, and have a thief have the ability to steal your phone while your app is still open or have on an unsecure network, have somebody try to access your information through Wi-Fi. Shouldn't happen, but just make sure you don't log out. Uh, and last but not least, if you feel that your privacy is not protected, if you feel that you might be the victim, again, know your rights. We talked about this last week. Reach out to your financial institution if you think you need help. And that kind of wraps up online and mobile banking. And a lot of it might seem basic, but there's so many cool features that get updated on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully I've shown some additional security features, some additional strategies that can help you with, reach your financial goals, or shown you ways on why you should really share this with the elderly population, because the flexibility and the convenience of online banking and mobile banking um, is, is the best out there, including the mobile wallet, uh, for which I'm a true and, and, and deep believer and proponent. I'm going to move on to the next subject. Um, and what we kind of wanted to do to finalize the three webinars that we've had um, is, is to kind of summarize some of the outside resources that are available to you. And we mentioned a few of those in the previous webinars, but we want to make sure that while you attend these webinars, um, one, that you can revisit the, the YouTube videos. The link is in the chat, and we're also going to share them again later. Um, but also that you know, you know what, I had some questions. I think Dutch talked about something. I'm not exactly certain where to find them. I'm going to give you a couple of resources so that going forward, even without Dutch and even without the webinars, you have websites, you have information, you have resources that you can visit to help your financial goals as well as the financial goals of your families and the elderly population. So while um, we're going to talk about some of the resources. We're specifically going to talk about the Executive Office of Elder Affairs and the Office of Economic Empowerment. Oh. And it's happening again. So oh, you're good now. Yeah, the timing was good because we're just about to start a new subject. Um, but again, we're going to specifically talk about the Executive Office of Elder Affairs and the Office of Economic Empowerment, um, but we'll also share some other resources. So first, I want to make sure you're still with me. So I'm going to do a quick little poll, true or false. Jessica, the poll is still there. Poll is still there. For your own personal financial learning plan, I know if you've, this is your third webinar. If you've, you've enjoyed all the webinars and you've visited every single one of them. So after the past two workshops, true or false, you have listened to Dutch and you have registered already for myfinanciallifema.org. True or false? Let's see how many of our current participants already have registered and looked at some of the personal financial learning plans. Thanks, Jessica. Go ahead and close it. Oh, no one. Ay, ay, ay. So important that we do that. And let me share you why, uh, with you why. So let's talk first. Um, about the resource that the Executive Office of Elder Affairs shares with you, as well as every person in Massachusetts. Um, and, and this is just a good reminder, um, and I know that some of you on the call are employed by EOEA. Uh, I know that some of you are very familiar with the fantastic work that is done by the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. I work for a bank, we have this insider, and almost every day there's new information, there's new resources, there's new tools that a different department of the bank is able to produce that would really help me on a day-to-day -day basis or can help my clients. So I try to make sure that on a very regular basis, I look at and take a look at our website. And I recommend you do the same. And share this with your caregivers, share this with families, share this with the elderly population, because there is all type of different resources, depending on your audience, that could help you. There's changes in Medicare. Are you able to explain those? Are you aware of them? How can you support caregivers? What are other resources in the community? Really key initiatives that are available for you to share, and it's just important that you use them. As a final example, when you go to caregivers specifically, there's a family caregiver support program. Are you aware of it? Great, but the people that are the caregivers, do they know? Um, how about counseling? How can you help grandparents that all of a sudden have to raise grandchildren based on a family situation? Every single day, at least once a week, um, just like we talk about financial habits, um, I would call these educational habits, especially if you're employed in this field. Just make sure that you know what's available, what new resources might come up. Um, different election cycles might bring new rules. 
uh, just be aware of what's available. And, and the website of EOEA is a fantastic resource. That's work related when it truly comes to financial planning. Um, the Office of Economic Empowerment, and again, I'm so happy to partner with both organizations, um, but truly, how can we offer free and accessible financial education, promote wage equality, and create a bright future for children? That's what the Office of Economic Power does. That's their mission. Um, and there's different resources on their website as well. Uh, the latest resource is Baby Steps, like offering $50 to every child born in Massachusetts. Um, financial wellness for state employees and retirees. Are you aware of some of the resources that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts might give you directly? Upcoming events and free financial education resources. If you're interested in financial education workshops, similar to what you're watching right now, webinars, these can be done as a webinar, these can be done in person. You can contact the Office of Economic Empowerment and see if there's a way to have an adult fraud and scam prevention workshop for your audience. Uh, learn about hosting or have some of the partners, including myself, host some of these workshops and different topics. We want to make sure that the elderly, that the older adults have resources, have knowledge, and we'll do what we can to get out into the audience and share our resources with them. Um, the specific financial resources for older adults available on myfinanciallifema.org. Um, money management tips, different pieces of materials to read, information around scam and fraud protection, information around identity protection. And most of those are set up in what they call the learning lab. Um, and when you have the chance to visit myfinanciallifema.org and visit the learning lab, what you're going to find is that there's different digital modules. Um, I've highlighted nine of them. Banking basis, budgeting, saving, credit and debt, saving. Hey, this looks familiar. Scam and fraud protection. What I shared with you in the past few weeks, just like today, will look very similar because I literally pulled information from the website and put them in a webinar format. So a lot of the information that was shared, a lot of the pieces of information that hopefully were useful and um, uh, were beneficial, um, were shared on my financial life, and you have the chance to take a look and 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 um, one by one follow some of these modules. And what's really cool about my financial life, it truly is my financial life. It's not a general um, lesson plan. Uh, you have the ability right in the lesson plan to create your personal um, digital workshop series. If you are into the financial caregiving world, look at that. There's six different, sorry, five different modules, all between five and six minutes, and they're interactive. They're going to ask you questions and give real life scenarios to help you with the steps to either prevent or report elder financial abuse, resources for planning for a financial caregiver. Um, and the same thing with budgeting and savings. You have the ability to fill out a four question survey at the beginning of most of these create your own personal learning plan and get different workshops, five, six, seven minutes max um, to talk about financial education. Um, this is the one piece where my kids hate me. I have my kids do some of these modules. Um, we find, and one of our main goal is not just to bring education all out to um, the elderly population, but there's a huge need for the young population all over the country and in Massachusetts to be educated on financial resources. And this is a fun interactive way to start learning about healthy financial habits and the basics of finance before you hand people debit cards and credit cards uh, when they're not aware of the basics of finance. So again, if you haven't checked it out, I truly, truly, truly implore you to take a look at myfinanciallifema.org. Um, fantastic website. It shares different resources each month. Uh, this was just updated yesterday. Um, so anytime that something important is happening financially in Massachusetts that could help the community, you'll see it on the websites. Uh, and it's just important for you to take a look. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, aarp.org, usa.gov, are other resources for financial education. And many of these have specific links for the elderly. So obviously AARP is, is, is a logical one, but there's very specific videos, there's downloadable documents, there's information. Um, if somehow the YouTube videos from Dutch don't make sense, there's different materials available on these websites as well that can help you, that can help your family, and that can help the people you try to protect. 
So there's a lot out there. Um, and, and hopefully learning about these resources will help you on a day-to-day -day basis with some of your own financial choices. Hopefully we've shared some strategies uh, to access these resources for you and your family. And truly the overall goal for us the past three weeks has been, while some of this might have seemed basic, there's a lot of people that just need reminders. There's a lot of people that might have not known some of the pieces of information that we shared. And we look at you not only to learn from the webinars, but also uh, to share information and, and make sure that we have more and more people that are familiar with what's happening around financial education in Massachusetts. That ends um, our webinar series. So um, as Jessica mentioned, there will be an exit survey at the end. I've told you many times, go online, check out myfinancialivema.org. Um, but truly our overall goal, and I wanna thank you for that, is I appreciate that you spent almost three hours with me the last three weeks to just learn more about um, financial education. And hopefully you can bring that into Massachusetts and help more people make better financial decisions. Um, that's all for me. Jessica, I don't know if you have something else to share. Thank you so much for that presentation, Dutch. That was great. Tech issues aside, only two times. I would say that's a pretty good record for us. Um, thank you all for coming. And I know I've been bombarding you in the chat with these resources, uh, but I will put all of these in our follow-up email just so you have these resources when you need them, as well as the recordings to the previous two um, sessions and the session from today. So please let us know if you have any questions. Um, I will make sure our emails are available as well from that in our follow-up email but otherwise thank you all for coming okay, great have a great thank rest you. of your day folks